Hello, welcome to another video with me. This is part two of the uh, component communications using Vue.js. If you have not watched the first video, I highly recommend you watch that first. So this time we're going to switch over to the CDN library to build the view um, components and you know perform the communications. So this result of, on the right side is the result of the view CLI, which we did in the previous video, uh, as you can see over here. So what it is is just basically I'm copy all the assets in this folder here, okay, and move that over to this uh, Vue.js uh, folder so we can have it kind of like a similar uh, output on this side, okay? So I basically copy the base CSS logo and the main JS CSS. Now uh, this one has so this this folder here is nothing. I'm I'm going to delete this so it's not confusing, okay? So the index here is the index that we're going to use to store the uh, tag. I will inject right here. I'm using the version 3.3.0. Anything that is above three would work just fine. And then here's the main JS. This file must be a type of module in order for this to work. So keep that in mind. Okay, so we're not gonna touch this at all. The only thing that we're gonna find a little bit hard to do is because since you're using the uh, CDN library, you're not gonna be able to have a nice uh, template as you write it in, in JavaScript because we'll put that inside the uh, script as opposed to write in the HTML. Okay, uh, so let's head over to the main JS. This is the root entry to the program. I'm going to do something very similar to the C CLI version. Okay, so for example, if you go to the main, it looks like that. Okay, we can do something similar to this. I'm going to show you how that could be done. Very really easy actually. Let me move this down to the bottom so you can kind of see and compare the two. Okay. So this is the CLI version and this is the CDN version. So I'm gonna go up here. Notice again, once you install, add this library, you have access to the global API. That's why it's called global, it available, it's available globally. Now this is version three, so you're not gonna be able to use the new keyword anymore. And same thing here, as you can see, we don't have the new keyword to instantiate the view object, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so uh, first we're gonna ignore this part the uh, create, we need to import that. So we can do something like this, very similar. I'll do, um, instead of saying import, we're gonna do a const, we're gonna destructure the object called create app. This is coming coming from the view API, right? So we got that uh, um, app. And then the app JS here, we're gonna wait for that second because we, don't have, we haven't created one yet, but I'm gonna go to the create app and then we're going to pass something to that. We call it app as well. And then we're going to mount to the tag with the app ID. And there we go. We'll come here to, to show you similarity. Okay, so we're going to launch this HTML on the right side so you can see it. I'm going to go into the open left server. And there it is, nothing there yet. You can also press F12 to see all the errors. We can see what's going on, right? If you load it, a bunch of errors. Yeah, okay. Now, so we're done with this one here. I'm gonna go back to the main and then the app component. So they use a different file. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go over here and create in the Vue.js file here, um, not a project, app.view. We'll create something similar. We'll call it, um, we'll call it app. I'll use lowercase by the way. So it, it's highly recommended to use lowercase for your files. Um, then, then this is gonna be the app component. So we're going to import it right here, like in the main, uh, this should be up here. I'm not sure why it's going down there. So, so we do this, this part now, we're going to import it here. Okay. So we're going to import the, even though we haven't created yet, that's, don't worry, we're going to import the uh, app from the file call app.js. Okay. Just like that down there, except it's JavaScript as opposed to that view file. So this is the main entry. We got, we're done with this. We're not gonna, you know, mess with this anymore. So we can turn this off. Okay. So there we go. We got this set up. Now the app component. This is how you do it. So we're gonna export a default. Now I want to start off using just. Um, using just the um, options API first, because that's e easier to understand. So I'll put here for now, options API. And then we're, we're gonna switch over to the um, uh, the composition later on, okay? So what do we need? Uh, if I go back to the app component, I'm gonna copy 
the template, okay, just to make it a little bit faster. I don't have to redo this all over again. The data, okay, you can see here we need the data, uh, uh, the city and so forth. I'm gonna copy, and let me let me pull this down here as we can see, a bit faster. I need my data, so here's the data. Again, it's a function, <clears throat> return some data. So this is the data I need. I'm gonna copy this, put it here, all right? And then my functions, same thing. Basically copy this. As mentioned in the previous video, the setup is exactly the same, right? Same thing. My template, since I don't, I don't have the luxury of the template tag here, what I'm gonna do is I'll use the built-in template attribute. Uh, let's put a comma here first. We call it template, and then it's gonna be a string. So we put it right here using this templated syntax. And then I'm gonna copy everything inside the um, the template here from the header down to the main actually I don't I'm not going to use this but I'll just put it anyway so you can see how that actually works but right in here so this is everything here already right so this the CSS we're going to ignore that um I think that's it for this one we'll import this uh the hello world in a minute so uh let's see I want to slide down here okay and we're going to move this over a little bit, so a little bit nicer. As you can see, I mentioned you know, it's not as nice anymore because it's not HTML. It's just text, so a little bit ugly. OK. Um, so now we then need to go and So we have a Hello World component here. We're going to pass this data down. So we're going to go up here. And then we need to import a component right? called Hello world from something we haven't created yet. Okay, so I'm going to create a component called hello dash world js. Okay, when we import that in, we're going to register right here under the components property, and then we'll call it hello world. Okay, all right. So I'm not gonna do the um, the uh, welcome here. You know we don't need it actually. Um, we're just gonna use this part here. Okay. So now it's almost done, right? Because you know we haven't created that hello world. That's why it's failed. So let's go over here and create our hello world. Hello dash world dot js. Same thing. I'm gonna do the export default and then object gonna have I don't think we have any data we have the props property it will look like this now right props and then we have it's an array of properties what properties do we have we have if you remember we have the city we have the state and we have the update city these are three properties we received we pass down to the child component so these are the things that we need so over here we have the uh cities okay I have to match the name exactly as they are, state. And then we have the update city, all lowercase. That is the property we see from the, the parent. And then we have, um, I don't think we have any data. Do we have any data? If you have data, you put it here. I just put it here anyway. Um, we're not gonna use it, but the data will go right in here, okay? And then down here would be your methods, right? So same as before. And then here we have our template. That looks like this. There we go. This is the setup for this component. And then we're going to import that in here, right? We import it here. We register here. We use it in the body of the template. And you see it's working naturally. You don't see any error marks anymore, right? If you did, you would see all the bunch, bunch of red errors. How do we know that? Well, test it out. Go into the template. Just type hello. It is, right? Okay, so it is working and we're good to go. So now down here, then we're gonna go and just open that um, Hello World application. I'm gonna go find a definition right here. So here's the Hello World. And let me close this. I'm gonna copy what I have here. So what do I have? Um, this is the, uh, no, this is not it. This is the Hello World. I thought I had it, but no, it's not it. Go to definition, it's still not going, okay. Go to definition. Okay, this is the one. So the props, we have four of them. 
the one, two, three, I, I don't have the uh, MSG. So we put that in here. Okay, so notice we pass data to the props because they're using the composition API, you will pass it this way. Using the options API, you pass data to a props property here, and then it's assigned to an array of property names. This are actually like, if you look at it, it's just like strings, but they're actually not. They're actually the name of the properties, like how you pass it down from the parent component down, right? So if you pass the state, cities, updates and so forth here, right? And the message right here. So the message is just a string literal. These are bound to variables on the right side. Okay, so we have these right here. So again, once you add the props here, you can use it right away in the template. So now I'm gonna go down to the template, everything from the div to the end of this div here, copy that, and we're gonna put it right here. Okay, so I'm gonna close this part now. We don't need this anymore, okay? So give us some room. So here we go. You see that everything comes back to like the other one. This is the CLI version. This is the one we just created. I'm make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> okay, if I click on it, you see it worked just like before, right? It's already functional. Because again, I mentioned to you, the code is exactly the same, right? It's just that you, ha you had, don't have the luxury of creating your nice templates. You put it here as a property and your methods would have any methods to be used. We could have, you, you, you can put it here. Um, I'll show you different how to do that uh, since we're here. And then the data, we don't have any data, so you don't have to put data here. So if you want to use this data, you can just access directly inside here now without going to like assigning to another variable like you did before and then uh, go through the props. You can just go through the props and access here directly. So um, yeah, that basically this is it. <laughs> okay, the the way how things things work is exactly the same as before. Um, well, you you pass the event listener here. I mean the, the function you pass it down as a property. Update city you use it right here as a regular click function because this function is a reference to the global uh, the parent function up here where you create inside the methods property and invokes that and updates the data goes down just like before. Okay, and then this emit here, we put right here in line that pass two parameters like this, okay? This is fine. Uh, I'll show you one more way. You can actually do that too. Since we're here, I'm gonna show you. Um, so let's add a third one for the sake of this example. And this time I'm gonna put here uh, city three, okay? So this time, instead of saying something like this, I'm gonna take this out and we're gonna create a function inside the child component here. So we'll call it um, handle click or something. Okay. And we'll, so we're gonna invoke this function called handle click. Right, so it looks, this is the regular, uh, you know, regular event click, a function that's inside here. This is function is an apparent function, but this is a local function we call it here. Okay, when I do this, I'm going to emit same thing, something similar to this. I'm gonna do something like this, but I'm gonna do, use something called this dot emit. Okay, the emit function here, you can access through the disk uh, reference. It's a part of the view object. So you gotta emit this, and then you emit the name of the function. I call it city, let's call it a different one. Let's call it city two, uh, city two, okay? You're gonna pass a different city, we'll call it um, I don't know, I'm out of idea here. Let's call it, um, uh, I guess Austin would be fine. Austin, Texas, okay? So it's gonna go up and then in the parent component, we have to register down here. I have to listen to this event. So we have another one called update.city-2 and then equal to update city. We call the same function up here. We just bind it differently. All right, so if you watch, if you click city three and boom, there it is. You have Austin, Texas, the Fargo, North Dakota and Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, so that is how you do it. And here, so notice the names here like this. The reason why I said uh, earlier that you have to use cap, don't use capital letters is like this. If you go here, let's say if I change this you know, to something like uppercase city and you put two like that, okay? 
Now the two doesn't matter. Um, let's call it upper case city. Um, let's put like a two, okay? Update city two. And if I go up here to the parent, and if I use exactly the same name right here like this, okay? And let's see if this works. Press that and a click. Okay, you see that it's, it actually still works, right? Which is interesting. Uh, sometimes it may not work. Um, so let's see. Yeah, if it doesn't work, I, I probably had it in a different experience that sometimes it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, make sure you, you know, break this down into, um, you know, separate words like this. And then, you know, if you do that, as you can see, it still works. Okay. Well, what happens is like, you know, if you actually do it automatically for you, if your property has a capital letter using the, um, the camel case or Pascal case, every time you find a capital letter like this, usually if you will automatically convert it using, we convert it to the HTML um, um, properties, it will actually put hyphen between every capital letter. So it'll be hyphenated um, for you. So just kind of follow the convention and so forth. So again, just use all over case, okay? So here we go. That is how you um, do it using the CDN. So nothing different there. Now I'm going to show you how you can actually use the composition using the CDN version, okay? Um, because you don't have the script tag, you, you don't have like, for example, if you look at this part, uh, not this one, the child component, right? You don't have the setup thing in the tag. You don't have the script tag, I'm saying, right? So you can't do that. So how do we fix that? Okay, so in the, um, let's go to the, yeah, we're gonna convert the app here to using a composition uh, API. So the template will be the same, okay? We're not gonna touch the template, it's just that the method and the data will be different, okay? So what you do is right here, you're gonna call a function called setup, <clears throat> okay? And then this function set, as you I can see, it still works. The data is still here. I mean, normally you don't want to put data here in the setup because both of them contain actual data. So it's quite confusing. Uh, just go with one or the other, okay? So don't don't use both. It's not, I think it's a, it's a good practice. Um, so inside here, then you're going to return an object. The data you return here is really these are the ones that you're returning, okay? So um, except, remember, compositions, they are structured differently. It's not object, it's the actual variables. So in other words, if I put this inside here like this, okay, um, no, no, I'm sorry, so I put right here, inside the space before the return, these will be like your regular JavaScript um, uh, syntax. If you remember we did this earlier in the previous video, right? Const, const like that. And then maybe we'll call this let because we're gonna change that, right? That will be, um, uh, that will be, they will put a semicolon here, semicolon there. Um, and then we're gonna put, so the return statement will be kind of similar. We're gonna return the cities. If you need, if you need them to um, pass them down to the template, you must return these. So cities. We have the state. I think those are only two. Um, oh, we also need the function, right? So eventually this function here also move into this space up here. So I'm gonna copy this, cut it out actually, put it right here. We will turn this into a regular function like this. And then we remove all of the, these things here because it's no longer a um, in the class thing. It's just regular cities and states, things like that. Okay, and then we also will return the update city, okay? And then now we don't need this data in this methods anymore. And the template will be the same as, as it was. So we don't we don't change that. We don't change the um, component, leave it as is. So um, there you go. This is like how you actually convert to um, the, so put here, this is the, um, composition API We're using this approach now. So notice we don't um, register with the ref. 
So if you don't do that, again, it's not going to be reflected, right? Uh, so you have to you have to make sure you have to put it to the, um, change it back to the ref again. So you have to import. I mean, if I don't do that, see what happens. If I click on it, right? You notice it does not reflect it. It's not reactive anymore. The data did change. You see Austin, Fargo, and Phoenix, like before, right? But it's not reactive. So because we never registered these two data set with the reactive, uh, no, not reactive. I don't have the message either. Um, oh yeah, yeah, it's it's just local down here. Okay, so again, back to that reactive thing. You have to then um, import by using the cons, the structure basically from the view. Okay, and then you can bind this cities and the state with the view. You pass it out to the view function. I mean to the ref function. And then now they are reflective, reactive again. Once you do that, the cities dot value, and then state dot value. There we go. That's it. That's all you have to do. And now they're reactive. Well, if you want to see that, we have to go cities dot value here. Okay, refresh. And everything is now back to what it was before again. All right. So there you go. Using the composition API via the CDN, very similar to the other one, except you importing from the view object as opposed to the view um, uh, file from the, uh, the knowledge module. The hello world here is the you know same thing. And I'll let you, you know convert this if you want to try that out. Um, okay, I think that's all I wanted to cover. And um, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Again, I kind of went really fast. If you want to see how things work before, it's in the previous video, the, the part one. So please watch that um, because the code is exactly uh, almost the same. All right. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye now.